Selamat malam waktu Jakarta and good evening Canada time. I mean good morning Canada time. <laughs> Kembali Salak Education Consulting mengadakan webinar yang bertemakan Indonesia Virtual Fair with University of Waterloo bersama dengan saya Tasha yang akan memandu webinar pada hari ini Selasa 4 April 2023. Salak Education adalah konsultan pendidikan luar yang membantu siswa Indonesia untuk studi di Kanada, US, dan pada tahun 2022 kemarin kami sudah melebarkan sayap juga dengan menambah destinasi studi ke UK dan Australia. Kami telah bekerja sama dengan lebih dari 1000 institusi di empat negara tersebut, termasuk di antaranya high school, college, dan university. Lalu, mengapa menjadikan Salak Education sebagai partner education kalian untuk study abroad? Kami memiliki pengalaman sekolah menetap dan bekerja di Kanada dan USA, sehingga bisa memberi, sehingga kami bisa memberikan arahan langsung untuk student kami untuk dapat sukses bersekolah dan nantinya menjadi permanent resident di Kanada dan US. Kami juga memiliki program career coach, di mana kami membantu siswa Indonesia untuk mendapatkan pekerjaan di Kanada. Dan ini dia investasi yang akan diterima siswa saat bergabung dengan Salak Education. Kalian akan dibantu memilih kampus, proses application, training sebelum berangkat, student visa application, airport pickup, dan career mentoring program. Alright. Oke, okay, jadi um, in, sedikit sedikit informasi mengenai University of Waterloo. University of Waterloo adalah salah satu universitas dengan reputasi yang sangat baik di Kanada. Sebuah lembaga riset terkemuka di Kanada dengan reputasi yang kuat untuk inovasi dan keunggulan. Secara terus-menerus menempati peringkat teratas di antara universitas-universitas terbaik di Kanada. Sebagai peringkat keempat, McLean 2022 dan peringkat ketujuh dari QS World University Ranking 2022. Bahkan di 2023 ini pun uh, Times di, di, di Times Higher Education University of Waterloo masuk ke dalam 10 the best university in Canada. University of Waterloo adalah tempat yang tepat bagi mahasiswa yang ambisius yang ingin mendapatkan pengalaman kerja praktis, membangun koneksi yang berharga dan memulai karir mereka, karir siswa-siswanya. Namun jangan jangan per, hanya percaya sama kata-kata kita aja nih, jangan hanya percaya sama kata-kata kami aja, angka-angkanya juga berbicara. Menurut University of Waterloo, 96% mahasiswa koop mendapatkan pekerjaan dalam 6 bulan setelah lulus. Dan lulusan dari program-program lain juga memiliki tingkat uh, tingkat employment yang tinggi. Nah, dengan lebih dari 6.500 pengusaha koop di, di dunia, mahasiswa dapat mengakses berbagai peluang karir dan membangun resume mereka dengan pengalaman dunia nyata di bidang studi mereka. Oke, okay, so without further ado, the stage is yours, Greg. Thank you so much. Let me just share my screen and get the presentation up for us today. Sure. So hi, everyone. Uh, it's so great to be here today presenting on the 2023 English for Success Summer Immersion Program offered at Renison University College at the University of Waterloo. And this year, we are also pleased to be delivering this program with an additional pre-arrival component um, to support students' skill development online before they even arrive in Canada. So... Um, uh, as you learned before, my name is Grant Leach. I am the Director of Marketing and Recruitment, and I'm going to pass the mic over to my colleague to introduce herself. Thanks, Grant. And hi, everyone. My name is Keely Cook, and I am an Assistant Director of the English Language Institute at Renison University College at the University of Waterloo. And as Grant said, we're so happy to be here today to present this program to you. Thank you, Keely. Um, so we're looking forward to highlighting our English for Success program, or EFS, we often say, to shorten it. Um, but before, we're going to give you an overview of the region of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada. We'll then give you an overview of the University of Waterloo and Renison University College, which houses our EFS program. And we'll talk about who the program is designed for. We'll provide you with program information 
and we'll talk about what your students will learn and what the student experience is like. Then we will end with a question and answer session. So as Grant has said, um, before we, we talk about the program, we would like to highlight some of the amazing features of our location in a tourist hot zone in Southern Ontario at the University of Waterloo and the city of Waterloo. Canada, as you can see here, consistently ranks as one of the best countries in the world and is currently the number one best country for quality of life. There are many benefits for international students studying in Canada. And you can see Waterloo on this map here. We're in the southern region of the entire country. Uh, it makes us a little bit warmer, <laughs> but it also makes us a, a warm and welcoming community. And your experience here will be one that will shape your life. At the very least, it will give you access to our amazing Canadian summer, wide open spaces, abundant wildlife, multicultural diversity, safe and clean environments, and an incredible quality of life during your stay in Canada. And then, thanks, Keely. And then there's the greater community, which is the city of Waterloo. And the University of Waterloo and Renison University College are located in the region of Waterloo, which is considered Canada's Silicon Valley. And it's home to the second highest density of startup companies in the world. And it includes high tech companies such as BlackBerry, Google, Shopify, and ApplyBoard. Students can immerse themselves in the area's entrepreneurial culture while enjoying Southwestern Ontario's most unique tourist sites and activities. From shopping and the CN Tower, which is Canada's tallest building, um, just 100 kilometers away in Canada's largest city, Toronto, to the incredible views of Niagara Falls, um, to the St. Jacob's Farmer, Farmer's Market, which is the largest year-round market in Canada. Students are guaranteed a diverse experience where the urban, rural, and entrepreneurial collide. This really is an incredible place to be a student. So the University of Waterloo is Canada's number one comprehensive research university with 36,000 students in 100 undergraduate and 190 graduate programs. Um, we are one of 15 institutions globally to receive a five star plus QS ranking. Um, and, and the University of Waterloo has been the start for countless company and student success stories through our bold startup culture, our creator owns intellectual property policy, and the largest cooperative education program of its kind in the world. Students benefit from an ecosystem of world changing research, innovative technology, and inspired teaching that stays active and engaged 365 days a year. Now, Waterloo students are not only learning at the forefront of their field, they're also gaining skills in adapting to our ever-changing future. Because of these skills, employers worldwide recognize a Waterloo degree. We have over 200,000 graduates worldwide and more employer student connections than any other university in the world. Waterloo students are high achievers. Our uh, minimum admissions averages are among the highest in Canada, which means that we have some of the brightest students from across the country and around the world joining Waterloo each year. We have over 90 nationalities represented by our student body, and we are committed to working harder than ever to recognize, respect, and celebrate the unique cultural backgrounds of our students. 
Our students are motivated and focused on gaining practical work experience through our world-renowned cooperative education program, which allows our students to get up to six paid work experiences while they study in their undergraduate degree. Now, Waterloo has a reputation as Canada's most innovative university, and it's a theme that we embrace on many levels. With entrepreneurship incubators available to all students, professors doing cutting edge research, and hundreds of thousands of dollars in startup funding given to our students every year, it's no wonder that we are number one in Canada for producing successful entrepreneurs. But it's not just investors who recognize the potential of our students. We've been ranked number one for career preparation in Canada, and with alumni in nearly 150 countries around the world, a Waterloo degree is getting increasing global attention. Like I said before, our university offers up to six paid co-op terms. So not only do our students typically earn between 8,400 and 18,000 Canadian dollars in their very first work term, but by the time they graduate, our co-op graduates typically have higher employment rates and higher wages in the first six months after graduating. Oop, sorry, Keely. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> Oops, that's, I'm bouncing around weird here. Yeah. Uh, over to you, Keely. Great, thank you. So Renison University College, where we are located, is one of the four university colleges at the University of Waterloo. Renison is at the heart of the Waterloo campus. You can think of a university college like a smaller community within a larger city. And the larger city in this case being the University of Waterloo, which has over 37,000 students. Renison houses a variety of degree programs, as well as the English Language Institute. Our English Language Institute offers programming that prepares students who want to study at the University of Waterloo. But we also offer a variety of short-term and experiential programs for students interested in experiencing life at a top university. And one of these programs is the English for Success program, which we are finally gonna to talk to you about. So Grant, next slide, please. Great. Summer is a great time to experience Canada, and it's a great time to improve English skills. English for Success, or EFS, is a short-term program for which there is both a two- and a four-week option. It's designed to help students improve their English, experience a Canadian university, and make new friends from around the world. The English for Success program is offered in July and August, two of Canada's amazing summer months. This program includes a vibrant social calendar, which I will share with you shortly. It has daily activities and weekend trips designed to help students practice their English skills outside of the classroom. Students will visit Toronto's CN Tower, Canada's Wonderland, a large amusement park, and Niagara Falls, all less than two hours away. You'll even get to go to Grand Bend, which is a beach town located on the shore of one of Canada's great lakes. In addition though, to all of the fun that we have planned in this program, the English for Success program offers many unique features, including 25 hours a week of intensive English language instruction in courses such as presentation skills, cultural studies, and integrated skills where students get to practice their writing, speaking, listening, and reading all together. There are different levels in the program that cater to students with high beginner English to advanced level English. We have 
professional instruction, and individual attention from experienced and certified instructors. And students will also receive a final assessment and achievement report, as well as a certificate from Renison English Language Institute and the University of Waterloo. So, yeah. So participants will live on campus in residence and participate in a true Canadian university experience. As we mentioned earlier, the University of Waterloo has a bustling community all year long, all 12 months of the year. Our university never changes because of our co-op program. There's always University of Waterloo students on campus 12 months of the year. So our English for Success students will get an authentic campus experience with Waterloo students. There are peer leaders who will be student guides for many of the awesome events and activities. There are also peer helper volunteers who will attend classes uh, with the students, as well as join in on these events that you see here on the screen with your students, um, so that your students can practice English as much as possible um, outside of the classroom. And while living with us in our on-campus residence, students will also have the support from residence assistants who will um, help with any questions about living on a university campus. With all of these University of Waterloo students surrounding English for Success participants, there are many chances to enhance language skills outside of the classroom, which is one of the best parts of the program. So to help prepare students for their time in Canada, we are also pleased to offer an online pre-arrival component this summer called Interpersonal Communication Skills for English for Success. In this online offering, students will participate virtually in two weeks of live classes and live social events. This is all prior to arriving in Canada. These classes and events take place from Monday to Thursday, one hour each day from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time. Students will also have the option to complete asynchronous assignments and participate in discussion groups for up to an additional hour each day. In interpersonal communication skills for English for Success, students will develop an understanding of what interpersonal communication is, practice listening and speaking in ways that will enhance their communication, when they come to Canada and learn the value of interpersonal communication skills in building friendships and resolving conflicts. So in terms of how you'll learn, all of your pre-arrival classes and events will be held through Zoom. Students will access Zoom links, class recordings, and any materials that relate to your classes through Canvas, which is our learning management system that we use for the program. Thank you, Keely. Um, so here on this uh, screen, you can see the important dates for this summer, which is quickly approaching. So you'll see that there is a four week uh, session in the month of July. Um, and then there is a two week session as well in the month of July. And then there is an August four week session. So the four week session in July runs from June 28th to July 25th. 
And there, I want to flag for you, there is an over 18 option. So students 18 plus, uh, we have students right in their, um, you know, 20s and 30s um, in these programs coming to Canada to, to experience life at a top university. And then we have a special under 18 program um, tailored and customized to that under 18 audience. So it's for students 15 to 18 years of age. Um, uh, and that session for the under 18 students runs as well from June 28th to July 25th. But we also have a shorter session in the month of July that runs from June 28th until July the 12th. And it is also for that under 18 audience. So students from 15 um, years of age up to 18 years of age can take part in that shorter um, condensed session from June 28th till July the 12th. There's also a full four week session in the month of uh, August. So it runs from July 31st until August 25th. Um, and that's as well for over 18 and under 18 um, students. So um, the pre-arrival program, which Keely talked about, how it really helps prepare students for success in the English for Success program. So the students that are, are attending EFS in July, they would begin their online pre-arrival program on June 12th, and it would run until June 22nd. And they would be taking advantage of that while they're in um, their home country. And then um, the pre-arrival program for the August session of English for success. It runs from July 17th until July 27th. Again, that's the online portion before you even come to Canada to improve um, your successes and communication skills in advance of the program. And as you can see on this slide, there's also the fee structure listed. And this is an all-inclusive program, which includes food, um, accommodation on our university campus. It also includes medical insurance. All of your trips, all of your activities um, is, it, is, is, is in that price. And so you'll see the over 18 program for four weeks is $4,738. And then the under 18 program for the same four week program, it's a little bit more expensive because we have additional um, employment checks required for and different different staffing requirements for our under 18 program. So the four week under 18 program is 5,638 Canadian dollars. And for the two week under 18 program, that's 3,738 Canadian dollars uh, for the under 18 two week program. So I'm going to pass the, the microphone back to my colleague Keely, who's going to talk about the exceptional student experience while in the English for Success program. Thanks, Grant. So um, in addition to those amazing things that are included in the cost of the program, students who come to the English for Success program also have access to the support and help of our entire student experience and housing team who are available to help every student reach their goals as in the program. Students in the program will be offered a variety of opportunities for support, including one-on-one -on -one meetups to improve their conversation skills, as well as access to program peer leaders, as Grant mentioned earlier, who are here to help support students in their English language development, and adjustment to their life as an EFS student in Waterloo in Canada. So maybe at this point, we can just skip ahead to um, one of our sample calendars for our four week program in July. All of our events, activities and trips can be an amazing way for students to practice their listening and speaking skills in a safe, supportive community while exploring life in Canada. So some of our most popular events for students to practice their social and English skills are events like speed friending, carnival night, and the bonfire nights. These are great opportunities to come together with other students from around the world um, to, to talk and share experiences. Of course, students also have the opportunity to explore 
the region around the University of Waterloo. You can see here one of the events one evening is exploring Waterloo Park, um, an outdoor movie night. So all of these things are happening locally, but students also do visit these tourist hotspots that we've, we've talked about and shown you images from um, Niagara Falls, Toronto, a beach day. So, so many things happening during a student's stay in our four week EFS program. But if you decide or um, if your child decides to come for two weeks, we also have a jam-packed schedule for anybody here during those two weeks. And don't worry, students get to experience all of those tourist hot zones during their short stay with us. So there's the Toronto trip, we have our Niagara Falls bus trip. Um, we also have a trip to a local market called St. Jacob's. It's a very typical and quaint and small Canadian town. So many things going on for students who are coming during our two week program. Um, before students arrive in our program, I'd like to just point out that we do send out helpful emails to help prepare for their studies. We also have weekly email newsletters about upcoming events and program reminders. And one of the great things about our, our programming at the English Language Institute is that we also have texting app communities where students can ask questions and connect with classmates even before coming to Canada. And this is a great way to maintain connections both with our community at Renison, but also with your classmates after leaving the program. So I, I, that's a really great feature of, of joining the program because so many of our students do stay connected and you know they make lifelong friends. Many of our students will travel to different parts of the world to visit friends that they've made during their stay in our EFS program. So I'll pass things back to Grant now. Thank you so much, Keely. I'm glad you mentioned the texting communities. I think it's one of the greatest parts about, you know, becoming a part of this community, even before you arrive, while you're in the program, promoting uh, participation in the events and activities. Um, and then after students even leave the program and continue to engage with the University of Waterloo um, students and peer leaders through the texting community. So we use Kaukau Talk, we use Line, we use WeChat, we use WhatsApp to begin those texting communities to make your students feel a part and engaged. Um, so now I think it's time for us to uh, enter into the question and answer session. Um, Keely and I are both here to, um, to answer questions. So um, please come, feel free to turn on your mic or, um, or pose a question to us. We're happy to assist. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, check. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much um, for your presentation, Brad. Um, thank you for the insightful presentation. It was it was uh, truly informative and um, thought provocating, and I appreciate the effort and knowledge you shared with us. Um, highlighting topic about rank of the University of Waterloo among the top universities in Canada. It shows that University of Waterloo is perfect place for the ambitious students who want to gain their future. Um, since you are presenting about um, EFS, English for Success Program, bunch question coming to my message and asking in a great detail about University of Waterloo Program. Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the first question is, Um, okay, so this is parents asking, um, um, what if the students, what if his um, daughter going through college first and then trans and their pathway and then transfer to University of Waterloo? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe um, um, do you have any insight for this case? Sure. Um, so not, we have six faculties at the University of Waterloo. We have a faculty of math. We have a faculty of engineering. We have a faculty of science, a faculty of arts, a faculty of health, and um, I'm missing one. 
In fact, it's an environment. <laughs> in fact, it's an environment. Um, so the, the, the answer to your question is not so easy because not all faculties operate the same in the same way. Um, certainly, some of our most competitive faculties are our Faculty of Mathematics, um, which houses our computer science program, and our Faculty of Engineering. So those two faculties will not, um, they, there, there's no college tra transfer programs into those super competitive programs within those faculties. But say, for example, our, our Faculty of Arts, our Faculty of Science, there are many opportunities for students to receive um, credits for their experiences and time within college. Um, so one of our great college pathway programs is into our honors arts program or our honors arts and business program, where um, students can transition and transfer credits from their college experience, and they can gain up to a maximum of two years of transfer credits into their program, which means they would have an additional two years um, or uh, potentially more if they're in the cooperative education program. So up to three years um, in the program. So yeah, that's a, a long answer to say some faculties do allow tra college transfer students and some don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's, that is great. Um, since you are mentioned about computer science, there is a new um, question. Is the yeah. university still open for registration for admission to the computer science program this year? For fall of 2023, the at, at the application deadline was February the 1st. So it's a hard deadline and it's closed um, for, um, for admission for September, September of 2023. But we're accepting applications. Uh, we will be accepting applications soon for fall of 2024 admission. Um, Waterloo for those super competitive programs has a really hard deadline and it is February the 1st. Um, so mark your calendars for next cycle and um, try to make your application in advance of the February 1st deadline. Some other programs do remain open after February the 1st, but again, those super competitive programs, um, because we're number one in Canada for computer science and for engineering, it's a hard close on February 1st and there's no, um, there's no exceptions. Okay, so there is no extension time. No. <laughs> and then when when will the the admission is open? So the admission the open. Intake. Yeah, for the next intake, the admission typically opens uh, mid September um, of of the of the the year. It always starts after um, a big university fair here in Canada. It's called the Ontario University Fair, and as soon as that kind of runs, then the application opens. So you can expect it to open around in September um, or the beginning of October. Okay, that is great. All right, so I think um, there is someone who already raised their hands. Okay, Clemens, would you like to ask him directly? Yeah, okay. I have a couple of Go questions uh, to a representative of Waterloo University. Sure. So um, um, I'm out of my curiosity uh, to apply for a, for a master degree should we have a GMA, GMAT or TRE? Has or not? Mm -hmm. um, well, we have uh, so many graduate programs, and not uh, all of our graduate programs require uh, the GRE or the GMAT test. Um, it depends on the program that you're applying into. There are many programs that do not require GRE or GMATs. Um, so if that's something that a student is looking to avoid, they can rest assured that there are many options where that is not required. So on our website, you can, or sorry, on in Google or your search engine of choice, you can type in um, graduate programs Waterloo, and you'll see a full list of our graduate programs come up. And on each of the program pages that you click, you will see the program requirements as to whether or not GRE or GMATs are required. But rest assured, there are very many that um, it's not required for you to um, to pursue. So, do you accept? Uh, do you accept Duolingo since the the price of the, that test is uh, more affordable than the IELTS? 
Um, graduate studies does not accept Duolingo at the University of Waterloo. However, undergraduate programs, if they're, if students are applying for undergraduate programs, we do accept the Duolingo um, test as an option, including IELTS or TOEFL. Um, but for graduate studies, Duolingo is not accepted. All right. So this is a, my last question. Sure. Thank you for being patient. <laughs> so oh, my no. last question is... Uh, if someone uh, enters into uh, one one major, let's say, uh, management master of management, and mm -hmm. someone has paid uh, the amount of tuition, and then um, uh, uh, on down the road, uh, he or she changes changes the the major to other major. My question is uh, whether it's transferable without any uh, you know additional tuition or they have to pay uh, uh, the amount of money, like, you know, the tuition, the tuition again. That's mm -hmm. the question. Yeah. So, so we always encourage students to apply into the program that they intend to complete. So switching is not um, guaranteed within, within programs. So that's the first and foremost thing is that I want to state. It's not always an easy thing to switch. So we encourage you to apply into the program that you wish to pursue and that interests you and that you, you have career aspirations for. Um, and uh, I don't work for graduate studies at the University of Water Lou and I don't wish to, uh, I, I'm responsible for undergraduate recruitment and for language recruitment. So I don't want to misstep and state something that I'm not actually aware of. So I cannot respond to your question regarding transfer credits from one graduate program into another. Um, but I can um, put you in touch with one of our graduate coordinators and I'm going to um, copy a contact for you into the um, chat um, at the end of this presentation so that you can follow up with that question with an appropriate person who does have the capacity to answer your question. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, thank you Clemens for your um, curiosity. Okay, so um, apakah ada pertanyaan lain? Maybe um, anyone, does anyone have any questions? Okay. Yeah, actually, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. sure. yeah, actually yeah, go just ahead. want to um, make use of this opportunity to ask for the undergraduate program for the Bachelor of Chartered Professional Accountancy. Uh, so when if the student take up this program, when the student will be um, getting uh, any additional qualification from CPA, Yep, they can get a CFA um, or a CPA upon completion, and they'll have, um, uh, it's a professional designation, which they will be pursuing right while they're in their academic program. And that's something that's really positive about our program is that you're steps ahead as a result of how we incorporate those components into the program. Um, so yeah, absolutely, you will be receiving those additional designations upon completion. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, because of I have one uh, potential student asking for that and see very strong background in accounting and would like to know more. So I just want to make use of this to ask. Yeah, thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Okay. Um. So um. Grant. Um. New question. Um. I am still grade twelve. I'm still grade eleven. Um. Maybe the in September 2024 intake, and then um, currently uh, she is interesting in actuarial science mm -hmm. undergrad program, and yeah. his high school has a curriculum with. Wait a minute, let me check. Um, IB. IB. Okay, since okay. I know University of Waterloo has a different um, requirement, maybe um, would you like to explain mm -hmm. more about that? Sure. Please. Yeah, we accept a variety of, of um, 
a, a variety of you know programming that uh, is accepted. So the Indonesia system is accepted, but also of course we recognize AB and the rigor of the uh, international baccalaureate program. So let me just pull up the requirements for you in one section. And mathematics. Okay, so to, to gain admission into our actuarial science program, you would need HL mathematics, so analysis and approaches, and you would be required to have a minimum of a six. And then you can do HL or SL English A. Um, so we need a total of 32. And then the general requirements is an IB diploma required with six total IB courses. And at least three of those courses must be at the HL level. Um, yeah, so again, it's it's HL mathematics analysis and approaches would be the required uh, the required course, but we look at the full uh, uh, six total IB courses overall, and three of them must be at the HL level. HL level. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, then. Not that I will, uh, I already know that requirement, so I will share it to, him, to her. Sure. Okay, great. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yes, so just want to ask another question here that seeing, you know, the deadline to uh, submit application for September every year that you know, the deadline will be February 1st. So if the students submit prior to the deadline, how long does it take for the university to release the admission decision? Mm -hmm. What is a turnaround time? Because of, you know, sometimes we do believe that, you know, the student might have a backup program that they might apply for another school. That mm -hmm. they, but their priority is to get admission into University of Waterloo. But, you know, they also afraid that, you know, they might not be qualified. So right. just want to know the estimate, uh, the timeline for them to receive the admission decision. Mm -hmm. So again, um, it really depends on which faculty you've applied to at the University of Waterloo. Um, for those super competitive programs that I told you about before, so if, if a student or our faculty of mathematics, including computer science uh, or actuarial science, like we just talked about, um, all of those programs, it's students will typically not hear uh, um, or get a, their their offer of admission until mid May. It's very normal for students to hear from every other university first. Um, but Waterloo ensures the quality of um, the incoming class. We actually wait for um, the second term, the winter term scores for students in high school in Canada. We wait for their midterm scores to come in before we start evaluating students. So that's why Waterloo is actually kind of famous for being the last university that will give you an offer of admission is because we're ensuring the quality of our class. We're actually looking at their midterm scores from their, you know, their second term of their grade 12 school year, whereas other institutions will start giving out offers you know, as early as December, um, Waterloo is 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 um, just taking their time to ensure a quality um, cl incoming class. So please tell your students not to be concerned in the least if they have not heard anything from Waterloo until mid May. However. If one of your students receives an offer of admission from another university and that other university is requiring the student to pay um, a deposit for their admission, then you can uh, email the University of Waterloo. The student can email and they can sh they can show their offer of admission and they can um, you know show proof that they're required to pay a deposit and they can ask the university to hurry up their decision. And that's not a promise, but it's Waterloo will do its very best if a student is required to pay a deposit at another institution um, to accept their offer of admission. Mission. So 
All of that to say, don't stress. It's normal that you don't receive an offer until mid-May. Um, and, and that's just like the reality of a super competitive top tier institution um, that we're looking for quality incoming um, a, a class because you'll learn just as much from your classmates in actuality as you will from, you know, uh, from, 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 uh, you know, from being in this institution. So you'll be assured a really great class that you're studying with. Is it possible, Carol, can I have that uh, email address from the admission team? Because, of, you know, I do believe that, you know, yep. some of the participants here, they are yep. actually, they are waiting for admission, but they might be, you know, admitted from other colleges that they need to pay the deposit before May. So yep. that is something that, you know, uh, Salah Education has been asking me, but I do know that, you know, the University of Waterloo only released the admission decision somewhere in May or even, you know, end of May. So mm -hmm. at least we have an alternative option to, yep. to uh, help the student because of their priority still, you know, University of Waterloo, but they don't want to be in the drama situation that, you know, at the end of the day that they couldn't get either one of, you know, of the slot. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, that's a great, uh, it's, I understand the stresses of waiting. It must be a very nervous waiting game. Um, but rest assured, if you do wait, um, and, and, you know, you will be rewarded. A, a University of Waterloo degree is a little bit like a golden ticket, we say in terms of employment. So um, definitely, if you have another offer of admission, reach out to that email that I put in the chat. It's my app at uwaterloo.ca. Um, and you can, um, you know, show proof, you have to send a, you know, a copy of that email that another institution is requiring you to pay a deposit. And it's not a guarantee, but if possible, they'll evaluate you based on your, um, you know, your academics, if they're able to give an early offer of admission, they will do their very best to do so. Mm -hmm. Can we do, uh, can we send uh, an email to uh, my app? at uwaterloo.ca on the behalf of a student or the student have to send by themselves? I think it would be better if the student sent it by themselves. So they just, in all communications with Waterloo, you should include your Waterloo ID number. So all students have a Waterloo ID number. So in the, the email, just include their Waterloo, uh, their Waterloo ID, their name, the program that they've applied for, and, um, and then, and then state, I've received an offer of admission from X institution and they're requiring me to pay a deposit. You know, please see the attached proof. Um, can you please hurry up my offer of admission? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for your info. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Um, further question about actuarial science. Um, mm -hmm. how, how competitive the program? First question and the second one is, is that program has to go up? So um, how long the student have to take the program? Is it four or five years? Mm -hmm. um, so... It, it, it's um, any program within our faculty of mathematics um, there it's competitive you know we are the we are the largest center of mathematics and computer science talent in the world um, and you know even though you see the admissions requirements listed those are just like the the, the admissions requirements to pass but the volume of students applying from within Canada and from around the world is incredibly high. And what that does is that actually drives up the admissions average um, just because of the competitive nature of the program. So um, any program within our Faculty of Mathematics at Waterloo is competitive. So if you've received an offer of admission, you are a superstar. <laughs> you're, you're really, <laughs> um, I, I don't know how else to say it. Um, it means Means you have done well academically, but not only have you done well academically, you've also, you know, demonstrated that you have a robust life outside of 
you know, the library, you're not just living in a library and studying and studying and studying in order to achieve those high scores. You've also demonstrated that you've been, you know, a leader in your school, you've been involved in clubs and extracurricular activities, you've played sports, you've, you know, you've been involved in the arts. Um, and, you know, it's, it's all of those pieces come together to for students to get an offer of admission into the super competitive program programs. So, um, so in terms of like, what average do you need for actuarial science, you're going to see that it's a minimum math average of 65%, which is extremely low. That's what's written on the, you know, as the requirements, but that's not what in fact will get you into the program. It's the volume of students applying drives it up. So to be competitive, um, you should strive for the very highest academic result as possible and certainly be in the in the 90 percentile kind of area. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Then. So um, since you mentioned about the super competitive program, uh, how do we know that the, that um, some of program is a competitive program? Um, it's pretty much at, like the way I've described it is engineering and math are are uh, as well as accounting and financial management. They're, they're they're extremely competitive programs at the University of Waterloo. So um, because of our rankings, you know, because we're number one in Canada for engineering, we're number one in Canada for computer science and and world renowned mathematics programs. Um, it's it, those faculties are among the more competitive faculties to gain admission into. Uh, let's be real. All Waterloo, Waterloo has the highest um, ad, among the highest admissions averages of any institution in Canada. And um, that's because of co-op. You know, a lot of students recognize the value of coming to, uh, uh, you know, leaving their home, coming to a new country, going to university, but also also graduating with up to six paid work experiences while you study. And because of those co-op, we have the world's largest co-op program of its kind, and, you know, over 7,400 employers in our network. So um, it, it, it really does make um, more students apply to the University of Waterloo and that just drives up the admissions averages because of the volume of applicants. So, um, but like I said, there's only 15 institutions in the world that have that QS five-star plus ranking, and that's largely due to employability. So um, if you're patient and you apply, I mean, we always suggest apply to Waterloo as your dream, but have a backup institution that you've applied to as well, should you not gain admission into Waterloo, which can be your first choice institution, but having a good, there, there's so many great institutions in Canada um, that are excellent in institutions as well, that you should have a backup uh, option and even a third, you know, you can apply to many um, universities through the Ontario University application um, system and through the support of, of, you know, Salak Ed and through Apply Board. Um, so keeping your options open is a very wise thing to do. And, and, you know, we love that you put Waterloo as your number one. And certainly if you get in, you will be pleased because it's a great return on investment. And um, the earnings that you make in your co-op uh, program will certainly help take away some of the pain associated with an international education. It's expensive. You know, it costs a lot of money to study abroad. So having the um, opportunity to to earn money and pay, um, you know, probably pay for your like your cost of living expenses at the very least is a big benefit of the co-op program at Waterloo. Mm -hmm. um, specific question: Is there any um, a, a website um, mentioning about the um, the program uh, competitive that competitive program or just like a list? Yeah, let me show you this. Um, well, it's not it's not exactly what you're asking for, but like I'm going to pull you for engineering, for example. Maybe I'll share my screen for you to see this. Mm -hmm. A different share. Okay, so if we come into um, 
Oh, can you see my 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 Google screen now, folks? Yes. Yeah. You can. Okay. So if you come into Waterloo, are you are you Google Waterloo Engineering Admissions Probabilities? So again, it's Waterloo Engineering Admissions Probabilities. It's a great site. Um, so you you take the first one, Admissions Averages Engineering University of Waterloo. And you'll see that even within this super competitive faculty that I said engineering, the admissions into the various programs are different probabilities based on the programs. So you can see we've got, you know, architecture, biomedical engineering and software engineering, computer, electrical, mechanical, mechatronics and systems design engineering, and then architectural, chemical, civil, environmental, geological management and nanotechnology engineering. So let's look at our, you know, among our most competitive, so biomedical engineering and software engineering. If you had, this is out of 100, so the maximum score possible is 100%. And if a student had a 95% average or higher, um, they only have a 29% chance to gain admission into the biomedical engineering or software engineering program. If a student had between a 90 and a 94% um, average out of 100, they only have a, an 11% uh, probability of gaining admission. Um, so, but then look at if we go into say electrical engineering, if a student had that, you know, super competitive 95% average or higher um, score, look at how much higher their probability of gaining admission is into that program. It's 66%. Um, and same as if they went applied into chemical, civil, you know, environmental, geological, uh, management engineering, if they had a 95%, well, look at they have a 90% chance of gaining admission. So even the probabilities within the, the faculty uh, vary, but you know what I would say is, you know, certainly strive for that 95% or higher if you're looking to gain admission. Um, and then also what students write on their admissions information form is extremely important. You know, the academic is kind of the cutoff. Um, that that score, but then how does the admissions committee actually choose the students? It's based on what they've written on their admissions information form. They're really looking for students who have demonstrated the capacity to achieve high scores, you know, while living a very robust life outside of the classroom, that they're active and involve students. They've, you know, they've had part-time jobs, they've uh, uh, or maybe not, not every country has part-time jobs, that's not normal, but they, if, the, if they haven't had part-time jobs, they've done volunteer experiences, they've had leadership opportunities, they've been involved in clubs, they've had leadership roles within clubs, they've taken part in competitions, including, you know, famous competitions that the University of Waterloo hosts, like the Euclid Mathematics Competition, which is very important for students to, um, to take the Euclid Math Contest if they're looking to gain admission into our Faculty of Math, and it even supports with admission into, um, you know, engineering as well. Um, or have they been involved in... Um, you know, like what types of extracurriculars have they been involved in? And certainly the key to being successful on an admissions information form is uh, for you to tell your students to quantify everything that they can quantify. So tell them that don't just say you played competitive soccer. You should say, you know, we I played we practice three times a week for two and a half hours each time in my grade 12 year. So you're putting a number to everything that you can put a number to so that the admissions committee can see, well, like, look at the volume of time that this student was involved in extracurricular activities um, compared to this student. This student had a 95 average, this student had a 95 average, but this student had so many extracurricular commitments that equated to this and this this one had this much, well, guess who will get chosen? It will be this student that's taken the time to quantify their involvement in these extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is great information for me to, to further inform the students about the, I, I mean, I think it is a hack for students to know the 
So so so, so they will now for the for the admission. It's not just about from uh, the, the GPA, right? It is no, also it, right it's about very. It's extremely important Waterloo's admissions information form, um, that supplemental information form. So after students apply to the university, they get access to our system. It's called Quest and they create their Quest account and then students can upload their unofficial transcripts to Quest. But that's where they'll gain access to this form called the admissions information form. And um, you can Google how to write a successful admissions information form. There's many resources available on the web um, to support students, but like the key certainly is to quantify everything that you can put a number to, throw a number to it. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. <laughs> All right. Since we have limited time, unfortunately, I have to go through to the closing. Um, teman-teman, karena waktu kita yang terbatas, i, uh, webinar hari ini akan saya tutup. Salak Education berterima kasih banyak uh, atas partisipasinya dan antusiasnya pada malam hari ini. Oke. Okay. Uh, jangan lupa untuk uh, update informasi mengenai kuliah di luar negeri dengan follow sosial media kita. Ada Facebook Kuliah Kanada, ada Instagram at salak underscore at. Dan juga jika ingin nonton webinar series kami sebelumnya, bisa cek langsung di YouTube kami Salak Education Consulting. Setelah webinar ini berakhir, jika ada yang ingin konsultasi lebih lanjut, bisa kontak langsung konsultan kami di 0878 2066 7883. Atau boleh juga jika ingin ada yang baca-baca artikel kami, bisa dicek di website kami. Simple dan mudah diingat, kuliahkanada.com. Uh, thank you, Grant and Kelly. Your expertise and insight have provided us with a valuable learning experience. And thank you again, and Tracy, for taking the time to speak up with us today. Thank yeah, you so much. It's our you. pleasure. Thank you so much. It's, um, yeah, it's everyone, my pleasure too. <laughs> and everyone, thank you for joining us today for this webinar on the University of Waterloo Station. We have you. What we hope you found the information shared here to be informative and valuable in your academic pursuit. Sekali lagi, terima kasih banyak. Have a good day.